Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone, and happy Good Friday. Um, as you can see, I'm dressed a little differently. Uh, I'll just wait a couple minutes for people to catch up and get online. Um, here I am. It's the same place. I like to move around the house to show you different areas. It's not that big, but anyway. Um, but I'm at the same place where I was yesterday because I it's that's where the tripod is set up, and and I'm a one man production crew, so I didn't uh, I don't have a lot of people to move. I don't have anyone to move uh, around, so I'm just staying where I was yesterday. But okay, I think we're ready. Do you notice anything different about me today? Oh. Not, not this, although this is, I wanted to wear this today because it's a special day. This is, um, well, a cassock, the house cassock, if you will, we call it, variola. Um, and I'm wearing a beretta as well. I hope I'm wearing it right. I had to make sure I've only worn it a couple of times. Um, it's, we call it a house cassock um, as opposed to the choir cassock, but it's uh, not, I don't wear it around the house or anything like that, but um, you can't see it. I'll show you the whole thing after this. I'll. Uh, show you but it's really uh, it's really an awesome thing to wear I wore it last when I went to Rome for the um, visit with uh, Pope Francis but anyway I'm not gonna wear this I don't think the whole time so all right here we go no but what I was saying is do you notice anything different about me and then I should have gone like this what you don't see is my ring my bishop's ring today the ring for uh, us bishops is uh, symbolic of many things. It is our fidelity to Christ. It is our. It represents our um, spiritual fatherhood for this church, for the local church. It represents our, uh, our, our being a spouse of the church and also the apostles. The bishops are the successors of the apostles. That's why when someone kisses the bishop's ring, it is not... It, it's not for that bishop. It's not. It's not. They're not honoring him. They're honoring what it represents. The what the ring represents, and that is the apostles, the faith of the apostles, the connection that we have all the way to the apostles. We wear it every day, and uh, maybe different rings for different occasions, if you will, different liturgies and functions. But um, I only have the one. I, I wear that all the time. But this is the one day we don't wear the ring on Good Friday. It is just a symbol, a sign that the church is in mourning for the Lord. Today we, we celebrate his passion and death, and we mourn that he has died. He has died, he, he has been placed in the tomb. Now, it's not that we pretend we don't know what's going to happen on Saturday night, Sunday morning. You know, we celebrate the death and resurrection, I'm sorry, the passion and death of Jesus precisely because we know that it ends in the resurrection for him and for us. If we didn't, if we didn't know that, then just to celebrate someone's death, death on a cross like that, would be troubling and maybe even masochistic. But we celebrate it in faith, knowing even today, and this the most solemn day of the year, how it ends, that it ends in the resurrection. We can even say today, he is risen. We don't celebrate that yet until tomorrow night, Sunday morning, but we know that, of course, in our hearts. Um, and, and I know a lot of people like to jump right toward, right to Easter. You know, we think, okay, great, we, we, we went to the, the, the service on Good Friday, now let's get ready to celebrate Easter. But our church pauses during this day and tomorrow especially to say, let us take time then to mourn, to grieve, to contemplate Jesus his death. He really did die. There were some heretics in um, uh, some people who were not, they were not orthodox early on in the church, the docetists, who they professed that Jesus just pretended or seemed to die. It was, they couldn't com comprehend that God could, could give his life for us as a human being. And so they said, well, it must not have happened. He must have just pretended or seemed or appeared to be dead. And they put him in the tomb, you know, just to keep that appearance going, to keep that uh, pretense going until he could wake up, you know, again. But no, of course, that was condemned, that heresy. Jesus truly did die on the cross. And for proof of that in his time, they thrust a sword in his side and out from his side, from his heart came blood and water. 
that was a symbol for them, for those who were not of the faith, that Jesus truly did die. For us, blood and water is a symbol of the birth of the church, especially baptism and the Eucharist. And now we, we celebrate God's divine mercy flowing from the heart of Jesus. But he did truly die. He was taken down from the cross. His lifeless body was cradled in the arms of Mary. She mourned for him. They laid him in the tomb, thinking, for many, thinking that this was all was lost, that um, he, he, that he, uh, this was the end of everything. Jesus uh, had died, and they sealed the tomb, and they went away extremely sad and locked themselves away in the upper room, as you know. So our church invites us to spend time like the disciples did, like Mary did, grieving, mourning Jesus' death, contemplating, asking God to enlighten us. What does this mean for us? How can I identify with this? Well, there are many things we can do. We can die to ourselves daily. We can die to our pride, our desire to have everything go our way, to uh, cheating or gossiping or any other thing that we do, any other sin. We can die to that sin just as Jesus died in the flesh so that God can bring about new life in us, mercy, grace, his presence, love, justice, peace, all of that. So that's how we can identify with it. But it's also important in this way. One day you and I will die. All of us will die. And we will be laid in the tomb. We will be put in the tomb. This is um, our identification with Jesus. He went before us. He did, he did all of that, was put in the tomb, and then he was raised from the dead. And we believe and we hope and we pray for that day that you and I too, after we have died, we will be raised with Jesus and live with him forever in heaven. So this is extremely important. We can't just jump right to Easter and say, okay, great, we got, that. We got the death of Jesus out of the way, that horrific thing, the, the passion, now let's get to Easter. No, we spend today, tonight, tomorrow, thinking about contemplating Jesus' death and his own time in the tomb. To help us contemplate that, we have an ancient homily that was preached on Holy Saturday. So all those who pray the office tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow will read this reading. I love it. It's a gem. If you have never heard of it, sit tight. I'm going to read it to you, actually. I know it's supposed to be for tomorrow morning, but it's, you can read it. You can look it up. It's just simply called An Ancient Homily on Holy Saturday. And it's just a wonderful account of... Um, of perhaps what might have happened when Jesus went down to the abode of the dead and there, well, I don't want to give it away, but there met those who died, those righteous people who died before him, the patriarchs, the prophets, all of those, and said, arise, you were not created to live in this abode of the dead. Come now, arise with me and live in heaven with me. This is really neat. All right, I don't want to build it up too much. Yes, I do. It's, it's pretty awesome. Okay, this is from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh, and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parent as for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow the captives Adam and Eve, he who is both God and the son of Eve. The Lord approached them, bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord be with you all. Christ answered him, and with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. 
Out of love for you and for your descendants, I now, by my own authority, command all who are held in bondage to come forth, all who are in darkness to be enlightened, all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands, you who were created in my image. Rise, let us leave this place, for you are in me and I am in you. Together we form only one person and we cannot be separated. For your sake, I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake, for the sake of man, I became like a man without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you who left a garden, I was betrayed to the Jews in a garden, and I was crucified in a garden. See on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See there the marks of the blows I received in order to refashion your warped nature in my image. On my back, see the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands nailed firmly to a tree for you who once wickedly stretched out your hand to a tree. I slept on the cross and a sword pierced my side for you who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side has healed the pain in yours. My sleep will rouse you from your sleep in hell. The sword that pierced me has sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise, let us leave this place. The enemy led you out of the earthly paradise. I will not restore you to that paradise, but I will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life, but see, I who am life itself am now one with you. I appointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded, but now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you, its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned. The banquet is ready. The eternal dwelling places are prepared. The treasure houses of all good things lie open. The kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity. The end of the reading. If you came in the middle of that again, that was just simply from a reading called from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. Look it up. Read it tomorrow or tonight. It, it is absolutely beautiful, I think, and can lead us all into a deeper reflection of what Jesus' death and his descent among the dead meant and means for us today. How we too today can die to ourselves again and again so that we can rise with him to new life. Also, um, I mentioned the, when the soldier's lance pierced Jesus' heart, blood and water flowed from his heart. It was proof to them, the unbelievers, that Jesus truly had died and could be taken down from the cross. But we know what else it means. We know that the most important symbol is that blood and water, that it symbolizes the birth of the church, specifically the sacraments of baptism and the Holy Eucharist. In Jesus' death, the church is, re is born, so, and so are the sacraments. And Jesus gives us the sacraments from his sacred heart, pierced for our sins. In the 1930s, the Lord appeared to um, Sister Faustina and revealed to her that what flows from his heart constantly is mercy. Mercy, mercy, divine mercy flows from God's heart. And he appeared to her standing in white with pierced hands, but with blood, I'm sorry, yeah, with rays of red and white coming out of his heart, blood and water. And he said, I want to draw all people to myself, to my mercy, so that they can receive my mercy, so that I can flood the world with my mercy. This is why he died for us, so that he would give us forgiveness of sins and his mercy. 
And so today we start a nine day novena. That's redundant because that's what novena means, nine days. Um, that's like saying, I know uh, these two twins. Oh, so you know four people? No, I know two twins. Anyway, um, we start this novena, a prayer of nine days in anticipation of Divine Mercy Sunday, which St. John Paul II set as the second Sunday of Easter in nine days. Ten days, actually. Nine days. Anyway, um, nine days. So, um, and so what, what, what we do is, um, is there is, and I'll give you a, a web page to look this up if you'd like. You can find the novena anywhere, but um, I like it. It's on uh, the kfc.org website. That's knightsofcolumbus.org, kfc.org. And there you can look it up under, um, I'm not sure, but look, if you're watching me, then you know enough to work this magic, the, the magic of technology, so you can look it up. But anyway, you'll see the Divine Mercy Novena there. And it starts today, and, what, and it also teaches you and shows you exactly how you can say the Chaplet of Divine Mercy every day. But before that, for these days, there is a prayer that we say each of the nine days, and then we say the chaplet. I'm not going to pray the chaplet now. I leave that up to you. I'll pray it after I um, hang up. Do we say that anymore? We hang up? Do kids even say that anymore? Do they know that that's what we used to say, you know? I'll hang up. Or do we just now, we don't say hang up. We, we, should, we just push the button. Do we say that like, hey, I got pushed the button on. No, we'd say I got hung up on. Huh. I don't know if that's interesting, but after I hang up, after I detach, after I push the button, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's like, it also made me think the other day, I, I told some kids, I'm like, hey, take a, take a picture like that. And they're like, what, what is that all about? What do you mean? Oh, it's that now. That's what you mean, take a picture. But we used to be like, click, click, you know, now it's, I digress. I'm wasting your time. Sorry about that. And I've lost my page. Here it is. Okay, good. So. This is the first day of the Novena for the, for the Divine Mercy, in, in anticipation of Divine Mercy Sunday. There's just a prayer that I'll pray here. Jesus said, Today bring to me all mankind, especially all sinners, and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. In this way you will console me in the bitter grief into which the loss of souls plagues me. Most merciful Jesus, whose very nature it is to have compassion on us and to forgive us, do not look upon our sins, but upon the trust which we place in your infinite goodness. Receive us all into the abode of your most compassionate heart, and never let us escape from it. We beg this of you by your love, which unites you to the Father and the Holy Spirit. And then there's a prayer that you would say, and it's just this, I'll pray it for you. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon all mankind, and especially upon poor sinners, all enfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, show us your mercy, that we may praise the omnipotence of your mercy forever and ever. Amen. And then you're invited to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Again, kfc.org. It's, that's from the knightsofcolumbus.org website, and it can show you how to do that. Okay, I think I've got everything. Um, oh, oh, people have been asking about the puzzle. Uh, so I finished it last night. It's only 300 pieces, um, and I got another one too, 1,000, so I'm graduating to 1,000. However, here, let me, I'm gonna, excuse me. Do, do, do. I'm gonna show you. This is really distressing. Not, not too distressing, but kind of. But I finished it, and, um, yeah, there's no, uh, well, there's, miss yeah, you'll see. Wait, how do I flip this? Remember I told you I don't, okay, this, yes, good. There it is. All right, everybody. But what do you see? I, sorry, I see two pieces missing uh, there, and I can't see, it's kind of backwards here, and up there. I have looked everywhere for them. You know, you'd think maybe it's on the ground or something like that down here, but it's just not, and it clearly says 300 pieces. However, excuse me here, I think we need to amend it. It's 298 pieces, clearly. 
So that's distressing, that's unfortunate, but anyway, there it is. Okay, great, if I can flip this back around. Um, so I, sh I told you I would show you this whole, I'm sorry, Ugh. okay, this whole uh, uh, cassock here. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's all, now I'm just, now I'm really wasting your time. All right, well, have a good, um, good and holy Good Friday. Don't rush right to Easter. It's, it's coming. It'll be here in no time, but spend this time today, tonight, and tomorrow really contemplating the death of the Lord and what his, uh, his um, being laid in the tomb means for us, what it meant for us, and what it means for us today. And I pray that you and I can die to our sins, die to our selfishness, die to our wanting everything to go our way so that God can make something new. God can raise us up. God can give us his mercy, his love, his grace, his peace, and all good things. May God bless you. Oh, I don't know if I can, I can't bless you with holding this. Okay. May God bless you. Okay. I saw that. Someone said, pray to St. Anthony. He will find the pieces. Uh, thank you, but he's probably busy. I can't imagine, you know, uh, Anthony. Hi, St. Anthony. Just I know you're really busy with a lot of lost souls and things, but could you find my two pieces of jigsaw puzzle? <laughs> Maybe, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, okay, I gotta go. Um, here's a blessing. May Almighty God bless you today, and especially on this holy day. May he unite you more and more to his son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and was raised so that we may have new life, eternal life in heaven. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I'm going to hang up now, or push the button now, or whatever you kids call this. Detach, disentangle. <laughs>